In this video, we'll be looking at some exam revision material for 3 4 Specialist Mathematics. I'm James Mott. I'm an assessor for Specialist Mathematics as well as Math Methods. So within the study design for Specialist Mathematics, there are six areas of study which will feature across both exams. Logic and proof, rational functions, complex numbers, calculus, which will involve differential and integral calculus, differential equations, and kinematics. We'll also see vectors, including our familiar i, j, k components, um, lines and planes, which is new to the course, and vector calculus. And then finally, probably in statistics, which will complement methods, which includes linear combinations of random variables, sample means, and hypothesis testing. So we will see all of this material across both exam one and exam two. Content from units one to specialist mathematics is assumed knowledge. So the material such as trig identities, double angle and compound angle formula, inverse trig functions and the modulus function that we covered in units one, two will also appear in units three, four. And some of this material will appear on the formula sheet. So it is important that we do familiarize ourselves with the formula sheet. Exam one is designed to assess students' knowledge of mathematical concepts and the skills in carrying out mathematical algorithms and procedures, as well as applying those concepts and skills. So typically exam one will comprise of short answer and some extent response questions, and it will cover all areas of study. For an in-depth breakdown of these skills and knowledge, have a look at the study design, in particular outcome one, and it'll list clearly those key skills and key knowledge that will appear in exam one. Exam one will be out of 40 marks, typically nine to 11 questions. You'll have 15 minutes reading time and an hour writing time. You'll have a formula sheet that will be common to both exam one and exam two. And exam one will contribute 20% to your overall study score. This is an excerpt from the formula sheet. So as we can see here, all the formulas regarding trig identities, double angle, compound angle are there for us. So what is important is that if we do see somewhere in the exam an expression that looks familiar to a trig identity or um, a formula, then we recognize it on the formula sheet and apply it appropriately. So this can become really valuable to us in exam one. On the right hand side of the screen, there are also some formulas relating to the new calculus content, such as surface area and integration by parts. So just like the trig identities and formulas, it is important that we recognize what is on the formula sheet so that we can apply it appropriately in exam one and exam two when it arises. Exam two will comprise of multiple choice questions and extended response questions, which covers all areas of study in the study design. Exam two is designed to assess students' ability to understand and communicate mathematical ideas, to interpret, to analyze, and solve both routine and non-routine problems. Exam two is structured that there is part A and part B. Part A will feature 20 multiple choice questions worth one mark each. Part B will feature extended response questions involving multi-stage questions of increasing complexity worth 60 marks. Within part B, there should be one question for each area of study. Exam two, you will have 15 minutes writing time and two hours reading time. Like exam one, you'll get the formula sheet, the same formula sheet. It'll contribute 40% to your study score. So when it comes to preparing for exam one and exam two, reading time and writing time is pretty tight. So it is important that you use reading time appropriately to plan your approach for each paper. As you sit through reading time, read each question carefully and look for key words and constraints. As you work through the questions, try to read and respond to all aspects of the question, reread the question to double check that you have responded to all aspects of the question. Momentum can be built up early in the exam by completing the questions that you most feel confident with. So that's where reading time is important to identify what you feel most confident with and try to do those questions first. As I've said before, 
you will have access to a formula sheet and it is your friend, particularly in exam one. Some further advice for exam two, with part A, the multiple choice section, make sure that you answer every multiple choice question. You will not lose marks for an incorrect answer. So make sure you answer everything. As you work through questions, eliminate options that you think are incorrect and focus on the remaining ones to try and increase your chances of getting the mark. For part B of the extended response section, if you're spending too much time on a question, leave it and come back to it. Time is tight. When a question says to show that a certain result is true, you can use this information to progress to the next stage of the question, even if you can't quite get the show that question. Assume an exact answer is required, unless a question specifies decimal places. In questions where more than one mark is available, appropriate working must be shown for full marks. So if a question is worth two or three marks, you must show working out to get full marks. Graphing is most likely to a feature on either exam one or exam two, or potentially on both. And when drawing graphs, check what you are required to label. So make sure you reread re the question, check to see if you are to label coordinates of axial intercepts or endpoints, equations of asymptotes or any stationary points or points of inflections. Make sure that your graph is smooth and if there are asymptotes, make sure that your graph asymptotes towards the asymptote correctly, that it shouldn't cross it or touch it. Sketch the graph over the appropriate domain and most importantly, check to see that your scale is correct. Use the grid provided to help you. Check to see if key points are within a reasonable uh, section of the grid. And in exam two in particular, where you have access to technology, you can fit your window settings to the grid provided on the paper. So an example here taken from last year's exam, uh, this is from exam two. So in this question here, students are asked to clearly label any turning points with their coordinates and label any asymptotes with their equations. So as I just said, when seeing such a question, we can set our window settings on our CAS device to the grid provided in the question to help us sketch the shape correctly. From there, we need to label all the appropriate information, such as the turning points, as well as the asymptotes. And also, ensure that your asymptotes are dashed lines, not solid lines. Some further advice for both exams. Reread the questions to check that you've answered it correctly. When you are drawing graphs, again, just check the scale, check the axes, check the key features, and check your winner settings when using technology in exam two. Don't assume steps in show that questions. Use brackets correctly in both exam one and exam two. Be mindful of the pronumerals in the question. So if a question features Y and X, or perhaps X and T in a kinematics situation, that you stick with those given pronumerals. Transcribe formulas correctly into your calculator and the results from your calculator onto the paper. Double check to ensure that you've entered it correctly as well as copied it correctly. And lastly, check to see if your final answer makes sense. So check that it satisfies the given domain or the context of the question. Some common errors that pop up in both exams are that students do not correctly use the formula sheet, um, such as choosing the wrong trig identity, not showing the working out steps, particularly when there's more than one mark available in a question. Students who go on to write further information um, may often lose marks because if there's further engagement where they produce wrong information, then that will produce incorrect working and therefore be at risk to miss out on a mark. If you decide to cross out your work, it will not be read. So if you decide to cross out work, make sure that you replace it with something that you feel confident is correct. And finally, do not make silly mistakes. So for example, don't forget to include the plus C when doing integration or including a DX 
or a DT when performing integration as well. For both exam one and exam two, you may find yourself in a situation where you may not find that the algebraic approach is the most direct or fruitful approach. So as you go into exam revision mode, think about different ways you can represent problems. So an example here taken from last year's exam is from complex numbers. So here we're asked to plot points U and V on the Argan diagram. And the first thing to note is that this grid is provided in polar form and that the grid is divided into equal sectors. So when seeing such a grid, it's worthwhile asking yourself, how has the grid been provided? Would it be easy to work in Cartesian or polar form? And then as you can see at the bottom of the screen there, in a subsequent question, um, students are asked to find in radians the value of theta and to plot this ray on the Argan diagram. So asking for two things there. And it's important that as we work to the question, once we think we're done, to go back and check the question to see that we've answered all aspects to it. So as you're working through questions, whether it be complex numbers or vectors, or maybe some sort of calculus approach, have in back of your mind different ways of approaching problems, whether they be an algebraic approach, a geometrical approach, or perhaps using some sort of diagram or a graph to help you engage with the problem. In both exams, you may see share that questions. So as has been said before, we can't assume steps in show that questions and try not to use the show that results in your work. You need to work towards it. So this question here is taken from last year's exam where we're given two complex numbers, u and v, and given the product of u and v and asked to try and work towards the given equation in terms of a. So on the left hand side there is the preferred working out from the assessor's report, whereby we can clearly see a clear progression from the given results of u times v. And then line by line, we work towards the equation involving a. So a squared plus a times one minus root three, minus root three equals zero. On the right hand side, is just some comments from the assessor's report that noted that particularly in exam two, which is featured in, uh, students had used a CAS to try and solve the given equation to obtain the values of A and then substitute those answers back into the given result, which is not what we want to do. And students then also tried to verify the solutions um, by subbing to the equation there as well, which is also not what we want to do. So the point of show that questions is to use the given information and work towards the results that we're being asked to obtain. So hopefully in this video, you found some useful exam tips and all the best in your exam preparation and the exams at the end of the year. So for those of you that are interested in our online revision course and sign up and enroll yourselves, you'll get access to our Thinkific platform, um, which you'll get obviously a username for and a password for, and then you'll be able to access and you'll have, um, if you enroll for multiple mathematics courses, you'll obviously have access to each of those that you're signed up for. I'm going to take you through what you'll see if you are signed up with the, with the general mathematics course, but the math methods and the specialist ones will obviously look very similar and they'll just obviously have a lot of different content in them. So this is what our website looks like for your Thinkific platform when you log in. You can obviously see that there's a welcome on, on the left hand side here um, and there is some things that will be um, a PDF that you can go into. So you've, we've got some tips for VCA success and then we've also got notes. So this is what I was speaking about, how you can go through a full set of notes and you'll see when you open up, we've obviously got our contents page there and if you're wanting to look at matrices or networks, they can obviously be completely printed. So you'll see our notes here. Initially, we go through a little bit of an introduction, a little bit like what I went through in in our video before with some hints and general examination tips. And then when we get into, we've got a formula sheet there as well. And then when we get into each of the individual modules, 
you'll see that we list the question where it's come from. So that's from the exam in 2014. It's exam one and question four. And we actually have the question there for you. And then we go through what the answer was and we have written a description or we put in the working or we have we obviously help you to make sense of it. So those notes can all be printed off um, and they can make up obviously part of your bound reference or you can use them for your exam revision. Then as we go down here on the left hand side, you'll see that we have the formula sheet and then we have each of our modules here. So you could go into data analysis and you could think, okay, I want more help with associations or there is videos on linear regression, there are videos on residuals and all of the videos have been done by VCAR assessors. And then underneath them is then also a quiz. So when you go into each of them, here you'll see that it will load up with a video um, and then you can listen to it. The best bit is you'll be able to pause the videos, you'll be able to replay things, you'll be able to go back and listen to it multiple times. So the advantage of the online program is that rather than you listening to a lecture once, if you want to hear the information five or six or ten times, you can go back into it as many times as you want and you can also just go to just the sections that you want. Each of them too, there is a quiz that you can go through. So you can go through and select one of the answers. You can read about it and go, okay, this one is asking me, a survey was completed. The respondents um, have answered low, average or high. What is this type of data? And you could go through and choose whatever it is. Um, if you thought that it was numerical and hit confirm, it will take you through that that answer is incorrect. I obviously chose one that is incorrect to try and show you. It will then give you an explanation as to why that is. So then you can go back and go, okay, it's ordinal because I can order them and it's also a category. So for each of those, you'll see that there is a video and a quiz. And we obviously have the same for recursion and we have the same for matrices and we have the same for networks there as well. We also then at the bottom have some tips for calculator use. There are some great videos in here on how to set it up. Um, and there are some other ones of just how to get, how to use it more effectively for general maths. The same for Casio. So depending on the calculator that you're using at your school, you'll be able to go on and look at those as well. Um, there is also um, our recording of our webinar from last year. I did mention that we do do a webinar just before the exam that you can jump on, you can ask any of the VCAR assessors that are on there lots of questions that you might have about the upcoming exam or you can look at obviously what the students asked last year as well. It's a great platform, it's got a lot of useful information for you there um, and we hope that you have got some good tips out of this for general mathematics and as we said if you would like to sign up and enroll yourself in our online course you can go onto the MAV website and do that. Thank you very much.